for its many colorful murals, Wynwood is one of South Florida's most artistic districts. What makes Wynwood amazing was variety. There was, was no control. Wynwood hosts some of the world's best known graffiti artists and muralists. We're trying to finish up the walls. It's a giant MSG. The surrounding streets have converted warehouses into craft breweries, galleries, and some of Miami's hottest restaurants. It's a place for hipsters, art collectors, and hype beasts to come together. That's super cool though. I haven't sold one yet, but they're amazing. <laughs> in the mid-2000s, Goldman Properties began buying buildings in Miami's Wynwood neighborhood, a neglected area where he saw potential and scooped up tons of real estate to turn a factory-esque environment into the art district that attracts millions of people from around the world. What you see today, nothing in this neighborhood has changed in 25 years. If Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think that's a bad thing, because if, if, if people aren't um, improving and respecting their properties, things just eventually start to look bad. And when everyone is throwing garbage, mm -hmm. then things, then nobody cares. But if one neighbor says, I'm gonna clean up my lawn and paint my fence, you will see how quickly that the neighbor next door says, hey, you know what? This looks great, I'm gonna do that. And the neighbor next door and- How do so, we help them do that though? How does the community help them do that? So as a developer, you come in. Sure. Um, I love your intentions. I, and, and what lessons are you going to implement that maybe we picked up from the south side mm -hmm. what did what did you learn during that time what what was the takeaways that you're going to be like okay and here now though we're going to do it a little different okay so a few things one in the course of of doing some rezoning we're doing something called a public benefits trust fund so as a developer if i want to develop a property a certain portion I'm not going to call it a, a tax, but it's a certain percentage has to go into this public benefits trust fund. And that public benefits trust fund is going towards helping uh, seniors out and uh, helping painting uh, houses and, in fact, putting in new windows and, and, you know, just helping people in the neighborhood improve their properties and improve their uh, living conditions. Because, again, we strongly feel that if we support the neighborhood, the neighborhood is going to support us. And, you know, I don't care if this is the best project in the world. If it's surrounded by, you know, something that is not also amazing, then this is never going to be amazing. Yeah. So the, the best thing to do is to really br unite the whole community and have everybody trying to do something cool, activating properties, empty lots. Um, in terms of what we've learned from, from just our, our neighbors to the south, well, we, we've learned a lot because... They went through the process first, and, and we've done, we've now gone, we're in the process of going through it second. So we've taken a lot of the things, the positives and negatives of, of their NRD, and we've incorporated that into, into ours. Um, but, I, you know, this neighborhood and Wynwood in general has just got the most amazing future ahead of it, and it's really exciting. Jay Wakefield, an independently owned craft brewery and tap room, sits in the heart of the Wynwood Arts District. It's got 4,000 square feet, 15 barrel brew house, and 15 beers on tap. I'm not sure I would leave here to see anything going on in Wynwood if I had my way. Questions I have early are, uh, I like, dark always feels heavy to me until you drink Guinness, which feels light. Right, right, that's a dry Irish stout. So it's, the body on it is not as, as full, but it's a dark beer. So it's still a low alcohol beer with a lower body. So it's kind of deceiving just because of the color. A lot of people see dark beers and immediately think, oh, it's gonna be really heavy and thick. It's not always the case. Right. But why do I always wanna take a nap after I drink most beer? <laughs> but I can drink a shit ton of vodka or a shit ton of bourbon. Uh, beer, right? it, it, I mean, beers are filling. I mean, there are leftover sugars in there. Okay. So they are, they will fill you up kind of like a meal, and then, especially when you get down to this range. And then how about the <clears throat> nitrous difference versus the carbon dioxide they use in order to... So, right. So all these beers are uh, carbonated. Carbonated. Right. right. And then um, when you talk about uh, using nitrogen, 
nitrogen to it's more of a much smaller bubble um, doesn't really stay in the body of the beer as long as as carbon dioxide does it's just a completely different like mouth feel mm -hmm. and a process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and and I also heard and I'm getting all these questions out early so you can then r pull them around for me people said like you you're always better off pouring the beer out of the bottle to open it up and let yeah. a lot of carbonation come off. Yeah, I mean, because uh, you, like with eating, you, your sense of smell also dictates a lot what you taste. Mm. Drinking it out of a bottle, you're not going to smell crap. Got it. Um, so it's better if you want to open up the beer like you do open up a glass of wine mm -hmm. uh, to pour it into a glass. Awesome. All right. That was my questions for the class today. Took so, yeah, I basically started you basically light to dark with a curveball in the middle. Okay. Neosis, a medtech robotics company that specializes in the dental industry. They came down to Wynwood and made their mark in the area about five years ago. We chatted with Alan and Eric on the True Future Robotics Season 2. They introduced us to Yomi, a dental robot. Yes, she's got a name. So we wanted to catch up and see how things were going down in Wynwood. So what about Wynwood? Are you down here in the factory now? Because last time we were together, um, the factory was just migrating over. So yeah, we've got basically our main office at 2800 Biscayne. We also have uh, the warehouse uh, just on the northwest corner of Wynwood. Um, across from the building where we taped before, so right across the street from there. So, you know, still split between warehouse and main office, so that's going to be a goal for the coming year or so, to migrate somewhere where we can get everybody under one roof. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great. I mean, we're still continuing to grow, so we need the space. So the space that we saw when we were in the parking lot, you just had done, the uh, walls were done. Mm -hmm. Is that that's still full speed? No, we moved no, across that, the street there. Oh, so you moved across the street? We needed more now. space. There was a, Already? Right. Yes, we needed more space. And since we were such in flux of how much square footage we needed, we needed kind of like a more short-term kind of lease. Yeah. So we moved across the street there. We have there about uh, 5,000 square feet, just open space to do manufacturing. And then now, like Lo mentioned, it's like, okay, now we want to consolidate both of them on short term, one year leases. So yeah. now we want to consolidate and all, you know, put R and D and manufacturing together just to Are you gonna stay in Wynwood? It's central, we've got employees who come from Parkland and all the way down to Kendall. So, you know, it's it's a good central spot. It's great for recruiting and attracting talent outside of the state because Wynwood, downtown Miami, it's growing and it's exciting. Alan Kett, a former New York City graffiti writer opened up the Museum of Graffiti with a partner, Allison Fraden, as an ode to the culture. He is a one-of-a-kind walking encyclopedia of the history of the art. The reason why these are so expensive, I guess now it's the size. Mm -hmm. They're also Kodak silver love gelatin this. prints. Love this one. I love when people are in them, yeah. And so, so the difference between this and this necessarily is he was able to photograph this, the minute or minutes after it pulled out of the yard, freshly painted, windows are all closed. Once it made its way one trip, let's say it made it to Coney Island or whatever is going, they would clean the windows off. They would scrape them off and then that would be gone. So he had to be there, uh, while while, they right there, writing. right after. Not wow. while they were writing, but right the right, minute, right, right. Monday morning rush hour, the start of rush hour, he had to be there. This one he missed. And so the windows are all cleaned. Got it. But these in themselves are very, very I cool. I love it. Like the one with the people, she's I love haunting. It. Yes. She's like really haunting. I, I love that one. And then here, this is pre-Henry. So this is when he wasn't doing it yet. This is photographers that were mm -hmm. on assignment. Mm -hmm. I, I was digging up images and I started to research photographers that might have been an assignment that took a few graffiti pictures. So I found all these different photographers and they had like 10 pictures or 50 pictures. They spent one day on, you know, when they were on a break mm -hmm. from a shoot mm -hmm. and they went to the trains. And so 73, 74, 75, 76 different photographers. Look at this shot. 
This is 1973. Oh, that's, that's sick. Look at that. Right? Yeah, that's 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 really cool. Very, very, very cool. When you introduce the people to this, it changes the vibe of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you see that it's it's it's, it's living. It's, it's yeah. living. Yeah. It's part, yeah. same thing when you introduce and you start to see, you know, fire escapes. You see pieces of the city. Mm. Here you see, you know, the buildings in in mm. in uh, Inwood. It does take a totally different feel on and because it starts to live inside of where people are. When you go through this style timeline up here, so oh. we go from 71 until today into some of the, the bigger developments in style. And so Broadway elegant style, long and uh, elongated letters mm -hmm. uh, attributed to Philadelphia, that particular style, platform style, the Bronx, bubble style, which is phase two also the Bronx, and then it continues on. Marshmallow, Mechanical, by the time you get to Mechanical, that's 1974, 75. Gosh, yeah, now that you're saying this, because I grew up in New York, I can, takes me back like, okay, that, I remember that, that, I remember that. The Philly thing doesn't register with me. The Mechanical totally does. Right, right? it's like machine, yeah. and yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's like New York, like in the, in, by 78, 79, that, like 1980 machine. That's the yeah. arrows are coming out. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gets sharper. The letters are getting sharper. Yeah. Everything here was softer. Everything here was softer. Right. And then here it started it to get to edge. Do you, more square. Do you off. think that reflects about how they were feeling at the time, or no, what, what, think, what influences that? I think that they were influenced by comic book culture. Uh, advertising culture, television stuff, and that, you know, they, they all say that they were looking at comics and TV and trying to pull ideas and packaging and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then remix it. But those styles that, they, that, that were from popular culture or from products are not these styles. These are the, when they started to break from it. Mm. So sure, Marshmallow a bit, mm -hmm. Platform a bit. But this is when they break from the styles of the time and start to develop their own styles because we don't have in here block letters as an mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So the Incredible Hulk mm -hmm. that you'll see, you know, you know, he's here and you know, there's cartoons that influenced uh, these artists as well. Those lettering styles that they would mimic from you know, comic book covers, yeah. Yeah. they didn't make this timeline because those are copies from comic book artists. Th these are breaks in design uniquely done by writers. So writers became their own uh, font masters or mm -hmm. typographers. Mm -hmm. And so they had to invent styles that were unique so that they can brag about it, so that they can have a unique identity. And no one wants to be the copy, oh yeah, you do that Mickey Mouse style. Who wants to hear that? It all starts with the space and how the developers move forward on creating a culture within that space. Win -win. Like another one of Tony Goldman's developments, Soho in New York City has gone from the place that people never wanted to go to, to the place where you can't keep them away. It goes like this. Their neighborhood's neglected, so the graffiti kids come in and bomb it with their colorful pieces. That gets the attention of the developers, and they start developing the properties for the artists to move into. Next comes the cafes, the boutiques, the condos, and soon enough, Bringing up the rear are Foot Locker and Starbucks, and they're flooding in the once ravaged area and turning it into the world's most sought after neighborhoods because Puff Daddy was at an art show there.